Hey guys, thank you for joining me. My name is Alex Trujillo, I'm the Senior Sales Manager for Flightscope, and today I wanna to take you through the Flightscope Mevo. This guy's been really impactful the last few years. Um, we launched it about two years ago, and it's been very popular. This is a uh, tracking radar. Um, so as you've seen through the progression this week, we started with Amivo Plus, X3, and now we're down to our Amivo. And this little guy gives you eight data parameters. It connects to your phone or your iPad via the FS Mevo Golf app. And what it allows you to do is take video and data and merge it together. So today I wanna walk you through the steps of how to do that, show you a little bit about the application, and then take any questions you guys might have. So first of all, our setup in our indoor studio, we're gonna have it indoors. So we have 14 feet of ball flight, that's from the ball to the net, and then seven feet from the ball to the Mevo. Um, we ensure that we have one metallic dot on the golf ball and we put that towards the target. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter into a session here. I have my Mevo connected to my iPad. We're gonna go ahead and go into the settings, just make sure that we're in indoor mode. As you can see, there's three modes there, outdoor, indoor, and pitching. Um, I have my, set, my tee distance, which is gonna be seven feet. And currently, I have my capture mode only set to uh, data. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through the data, and then after that, we're gonna do video and data, and I'll show you how that works. But we'll go back into, we'll exit out of the settings screen, and now we're gonna go ahead and start a session. I'm gonna grab a seven iron, and I'll hit a couple shots here for you. Again, one metallic sticker facing the target. Set it down, we're ready to go. Now the Mevo gives you eight data parameters. Currently we have six up here. We have club, carry distance, club speed, ball speed, smash factor, launch, and spin. And the last two that are missing is height and time. Um, currently you're only allowed to have six up on the screen. Um, if you wanted to add the additional two, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so let's hit a shot here. Oh, we're not ready. There we go. I'm gonna hit three just so we can uh, talk over the data. Please be sure if you have any questions to ask them in the ask a question section so we can answer your questions. You'll also get a clipping of the answer. If you ask them in the chat, we'll try to answer some, but sometimes when you guys start chatting, it's hard for us to follow them. So please do it in the ask a question section and we'll make, make sure that we can get back to you on those today. And we'll hit the last one here. Alrighty, so. First thing that we can do is we're gonna go over to the trajectory screen. And what this screen is gonna show you is gonna show you trajectory from the side, and then it gives you all six data parameters for that shot. So on the bottom, ball speed, club speed, smash factor, carry, launch, spin, time, and height. We'll go over to the table screen. And now on the table screen, it's gonna show us all three shots that I hit with this club, and then my six data parameters. So that's, that's doing it just data only. But the, the very cool thing about the Mevo is the ability to do video and data. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into our settings, we're gonna turn on video, and then my colleague is gonna take, is gonna hold the iPad, take a video of me uh, doing a swing, and then I'll show you how that works. So let's go ahead and go, yep, turn on the video. And then we're gonna go to the, we're gonna go to the, uh, there we go. All righty, here we go. Now the, the Mevo is gonna automatically clip the video for you, pre and post impact. So you'll see how that, how that works. All right. So go to review. All right guys, so here you see it. You see the video, there's my swing. 
I got my six data parameters up top. I can move that, those, that box with the data parameters, so I can move it up or down, left or right. I can go to draw. So maybe take me back to the top, Tyler, and let's draw some lines on my swing. All right, go ahead and grab the, uh, the draw. And then you could put up some lines, some circles. So it gives you the ability to do some, some lines and circles on your video. And then let's go ahead and say done. And now let's say we want to share the video. So we can go to share. And now we would have the opportunity to share that video to any of our social media platforms. We can text it, we can email it. Um, you know, if we want to maybe send it to our coach or one of our friends, you can do it right here through this, uh, this, uh, this screen. So there you have it. There's the Mevo with the Mevo Golf app. And I'll take any questions you guys might have now. Okay, first question we have here is from David. Is there a way to have average distance calculated for a session? For example, 50 shots with my 7-iron. Okay, David, so um, what we'll do is go to the table screen. And okay, so all clubs is selected. Okay, so I see what you're saying. You want, you want to be able to see an average for, for example, carry distance, ball speed, club speed. Um, I completely understand what you're saying there. I'll make sure we get this to the developer so that we can add a bar uh, for your averages for that particular club. Great point. Next question. Okay, next question here is from Greg. Any thoughts of adding the set angle with either Mevo or Mevo Plus? So for, uh, for Mevo, I don't think that there's going to be any additional data parameters um, at the moment. I'll give you guys a reference on the size of this unit. Uh, give me one second. So this is my, this is my iPhone. Um, and if you notice, here's the comparison of the, the unit to the iPhone. So it's, it's, it's really small. So the radar panel is small. So we're limited to how much data we can track on this device because of the size. Um, so Mevo Plus, definitely there could be some additions that we might do to it in the future. Uh, but for the Mevo, it's probably going to be uh, what we have. Next question. Okay, question here from Simon. Are you still seeing some issues with spin numbers with wedges? Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen that, but um, let's hit some wedges. Let's see what we get. The, the, the most important thing, guys, about, about this product indoors is you have to ensure that you use that metallic sticker and that the sticker is facing the net or the target. Now the reason for that is the radar can actually see through the dielectric uh, material of the golf ball. So when the radar signal goes through the golf ball, the dot is on this side, on the, on the net side, the dot acts as a, magnifying, a magnifier for the radar. So that's why the, the placement of the dot is important. Um, so if you're indoors, highly recommend that. And then also just making sure that your space, um, you know, is, is adequate, that you have your at least eight feet of ball flight and you have your, your seven feet back for distance. So I got, a, I got a 54 here. So one thing to remember is also your, your club type. It's not, it's not really that the radar needs to know whether you have like a seven or an eight iron. What it does need to know, however, is that you're hitting either a wedge, an iron, or a wood. That is important for the radar. So for example, right now we're set on pitching wedge. Doesn't really matter. I have a 54. So there you have it. That's a 54. I hit it. I hit a 54 yards with a ball speed of 54, um, a spin rate of 62-63. That's pretty good for that, that ball speed. If 
56 carry, 55 ball, 64 spin. Now, if you guys are at home and you're hitting shots and you're, and you're not too worried about spin, um, you're just working on your swing or whatever the case may be, you don't have to put the dot facing forward. Um, but again, just know that in order for us to be able to accurately uh, give you that information for spin rate, the dot should be facing forward because it, it will assist the radar um, in its tracking. Hit it a little further, 67, 61 ball speed, 7101. So, um, you know, if you guys are seeing some issues with, with your spin on the wedges, just give our support team a ring uh, and, they can, and they can help you guys out. Next question. Okay, question from Chris. What is the difference between Nevo and Nevo Plus? Okay, so. Here's Mevo, here's Mevo Plus. So the first thing you'll notice is size. So this radar is much bigger than the Mevo, so that's going to enhance the capabilities of tracking. The Mevo Plus also has an internal camera for alignment. Um, so these are both limited flight radars, meaning that they don't track um, the entire flight. They track a certain portion of the flight, and then we run a ballistic uh, model. Our X3, for example, the bigger guy, that's a full tracking radar, but that uses fusion technology as well. So the size difference makes a difference on how much we can track and what the power of the radar is. So this, the, the Mevo isn't gonna track as far as the Mevo Plus, but it's still very accurate. So, you know, we track a certain portion of the flight and then we give you, uh, we run an algorithm to give you that carry distance that you see there. And just for, for those of you who aren't aware, um, our, our models have been around for a long time. The company's been around since 1989. Uh, Henry Johnson, our founder and CEO, initially started with tracking projectiles in the defense industry, uh, missiles and, and um, 155 rounds, 105 rounds, just defense uh, type projectiles. And so through that, we, we learned a lot about ballistic modeling and how, how things fly through the air. And so a lot of that information has been added to these radars to make them as accurate as possible. Got any more questions? Okay, question here from John. How far behind the ball do we set up the unit? Okay, so in this current setup here, I have it seven feet behind the ball. In the settings, it will allow you to adjust that. Um, seven feet seems to be, uh, in my opinion, where it really is at its best. So you just go to the application, you set it to seven feet. If you wanna show them in the device settings there, um, where that is. So you'll see right here where it says distance to T, and you have a scroller where you can kind of scroll up and down and we just set it over, over there. We max it out to seven feet. And that's what we have here. We have it at seven feet. Um, okay, another question here from John. Do divots affect MIVO accuracy? Um, you, you might see it at times uh, with a wedge where if you hit St steeply down and you create a big divot, um, it could miss a, a certain data parameter. Um, and the reason for that is because it isn't a fusion tracking radar, so it's using only uh, Doppler. Whereas, for example, our X3 uses Doppler with image processing through the fusion technique. So you shouldn't see much of it. I mean, I've, I've used this little guy a lot. Uh, I mean, we have tour players that use this. Um, and it's really good throughout the bag. However, if you do start getting you know, extremely steep and you start creating a, create, creating a lot of noise in the impact interval, then um, there could be times where you see, you know, it'll, it'll give you information, but some of, the, some of the blocks might be dashed out, meaning that it, it, didn't, it wasn't able to see that, so it didn't report a number.
Okay, question from LC. I haven't seen any recent firmware updates from Milo. Are you still working this device for new features or correcting bugs? Absolutely. We are always uh, improving our, our software and our firmware on our units. As a matter of fact, we continue to improve the hardware as well. Um, so yes, we will continue to support this product. We will continue to make updates to the applications as well as the firmware to make it a better experience for the customer. And, and to, to follow along on that point, I think it's important to note that we have, we have units in the field that have been around for probably over 10 years. We go back maybe to our, our Kudu um, unit, our Prime units. These are units that have been in the field a long time. And for example, on the, on the Kudu Prime, it was only about a year or a year and a half ago, maybe two years, that we actually stopped supporting it. Now what that means is that, it doesn't mean that if you have a problem with your unit that we're not gonna help you and, and get it fixed for you. It just means that parts become unavailable because technology progresses and so you, those parts aren't, aren't readily available. And so if we have the parts, we'll fix it for you. If we don't, then at that point in time, we, we have to move on or, or get you upgraded. But we're gonna support our products uh, through the duration until we can no longer support them. Okay, this is a question I'm seeing repeated here. Um, just talk about the importance of the height and the level of the Mevo compared to where the ball is at on the hitting mat. Okay, so in this setup that you guys see here, you probably see that I'm, I'm, I'm on a mat here, um, and there, this is our ground. So this mat is about an inch and a half, I'd say it's right around an inch. So the Mevo is actually sitting on the ground, um, and it's about, there's about a one inch a uh, height difference. You, you don't, what you don't, and that's, that's fine, that's how we want to set it up. What you don't want to do is you don't want to create a valley in between the radar and the mat. So if you, if you start to raise the Mevo up, what, cr what happens is you create a valley in between the mat and the Mevo, and then you can start having multi-path issues where um, you might not have, you might not get tracking on certain data parameters. So set your unit on the ground, if your mat is an inch or two high, it's fine. Um, the limitation on that, I'm gonna speak under correction. I believe it's a maximum with Amiibo, it's a maximum of four inches. Uh, I speak under correction. I, I wanna say it's between four to six, um, but we will f I will find out for you guys. Uh, if you guys just wanna, uh, that question is in the chat. We'll have our support team uh, give you an exact on that. I, I mean, I don't really, well, there could be some mats that are that are probably six inches, but um, most of them would be around this, an inch or two. Okay, another question from Ryan. Once opening the app, it lists the previous sessions. Is there a way to delete past sessions? All right, let's 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 go ahead and exit out. So, uh, to my understanding, if you swipe one to the left, I believe, okay, that doesn't allow you to do it. Um, yeah, so it goes into the session. That's a great question. I, I'm, I'm, I don't have the answer for you on that, but I, I know there's a way to delete them. It might be through myflyscope.com. I don't see a way on the application, but great question. We'll get with the developers on that and figure out if there's a way that we can add that feature for you. Okay, so the focus band settings are an integration that we have with a, a band, which is called focus band. It's, it's a band that you put around your head and it measures your brain waves. It kind of tells you which side of your brain you're using, whether it's left or right. Uh, one side of the brain is analytical, the other side is, is creative. And so we do have an integration with them. So if you own a focus band, you would go into your settings and you can actually connect that band um, to your Mevo and, and the Mevo uh, golf app. And then the focus band data would be also on your sessions.